sense, connecting sight, sound and life. Ink Blowing with Sense Arts by Alex McEwen. Hello everybody, I'm Alex McEwen and welcome to my Sense Arts Inclusive Ink Blowing Workshop. Um, during this time, uh, Sense are committed to helping people live creative and active lives. So over the coming weeks, uh, we'll be sharing different activities for you to try at home. Um, we want to make sure everybody can take part. So we want to make them as accessible as possible. So I'm going to be auto describing everything I do. And we have a BSL interpreter and captioning also. So today I am bringing you this workshop from my studio on the west coast of Scotland. Um, I'm, I've tidied it up. I am sitting at a desk which is covered in white paper. I'm wearing a blue t-shirt and behind me is a large painting on a dark blue wall. So as I said, um, today we're going to be doing some ink blowing. We're going to do uh, this three different ways. Um, and I don't want you to worry about it because it is really fun. It's really easy and it's very, very, very expressive. It's, it's playing, really. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it, so I wouldn't worry about that at all. I've got some examples to show you to start with. So here is a large piece of an A3 piece of paper. And this one I have done with ink, as you can see, it's colourful, it's fun, and it's really, really expressive. Here's another example. Um, I've got an A4 sheet of white paper this time, and this one has been done with very diluted poster paint, but you still get a wonderful, colourful effect. And I'm showing you now another piece of A4 paper and this one is far more neutral and it's got browns and oranges, it's very earthy and this one has been made using things from the kitchen store cupboard. So three different ways of doing the same activity so hopefully you'll have some of these things to hand at home. Okay so the one that we're going to do which involves trying to make a nice colourful design in ink we are going to need a white piece of paper. This one's A3. You don't need to have an A3 one. You um, can use card. This one I have just used the back of a everyday cereal packet. Um, you can use that if you don't have any card, to, uh, have any white paper or card to hand. Or you can just use very simple printer paper, okay? So you've got your nice clean paper you are going to need a straw. Now, these are the plastic ones which bend at the top and that's actually quite helpful. If they're plastic or metal, it will work a little bit better because paper ones do tend to get a bit soggy when they're dipping them in the ink. So we've got our clean white paper or pale coloured paper, some straws. And for the inks, here I have got some small jars of different colours. I've got green, I've got purple, I've got red, I've got a nice mixture of colours and I bought these online. Now I appreciate not everybody will have ink to hand so you can also use uh, children's poster paint. If you take your poster paint, I got this at my local supermarket, it's very inexpensive, it's a small plastic bottle of poster paint I think they cost around a pound each. I've taken a jam jar, I've put a little squirt of paint in the bottom and then I've topped that up with water so all I have when I stir it up is coloured water. It's so runny that I can blow it just like, just like ink, okay? So it's nice to have a few colours to hand here. I've got some green, some blue, I've got a red one and a yellow one. So um, these will make a really colourful display. And every time, just make sure you give them a good mix so that the paint doesn't sink to the bottom. So that's another way you can do it. And lastly, here are some things which I have from my store cupboard. So in this one, it smells fantastic. It's very, very, very strong coffee. So what I have done is I have taken some coffee granules, 
diluted them in a little bit of, of warm water, let it cool down, and we're going to use this as a substitute for ink. Okay, it's going to be like brown ink. And here I have two out of date, I found them at the back of the cupboard, food dyes. So I've got an orange, natural orange dye for, I think you add it to cakes and icings, and I've got a pink one as well. All of these things we're using today are non-toxic. So your paint is children's posters paint and it is non-toxic. Inks are, drawing inks are non-toxic and obviously things from the store cupboard are edible. And that's all you're going to need. So let's get on to making. So let's get to work with trying out an, uh, the inks first of all. So take a little pen, uh, paintbrush and on your nice clean bit of paper, you can just either pour or dab, it's a bit decadent to pour, but I'm going to pour, um, some different colours. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue in the one corner of the paper in a big puddle. I'm going to use a little bit of green in the middle of the paper. Doesn't matter if it splodges, splodging's good. Um, I'm going to put a little dollop of pink over here and I, and I think that's probably enough to be going on with. Maybe try a little dollop more blue in a few places because blue is my favourite colour. Okay. And as I say, no right or wrong. The ink is going to go wherever the air pushes it. So you take your, your plastic straw. It helps if you've got the bendy one because you can bend it up at the end. And you're going to take a big breath. And you're definitely blowing the ink. You don't suck it up, otherwise you'll get interesting coloured tongue. And we're going to blow it all over the place and see what we get when you never know what you get. That's the exciting bit. So here we go. Ready? And the colours start to merge and bleed into each other. And that's a good thing that we get all sorts of interesting shades. I'm going to turn my piece of paper round 180 because all my ink has gone to one end of the, the paper here. And I'm going to try blowing it in another direction and see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Three, two, one, blow. Oh, all sorts of spidery marks happening here. I'm going to rotate my paper again and blow it in another direction. And it's starting to look quite interesting here. So all my ink is staying quite close to the center, so I'm gonna try and branch out a little bit, put a blob of ink, and you just keep going until you're happy with the design. And I'm blowing it around, still blowing. It takes quite a lot of puff. And here we go, we have some... I'm, I'm glad I've covered my... my desktop with some paper because it has gone everywhere. It's probably a good idea to always wear an old t-shirt and cover your desktop at the beginning. And that's one of our ink designs. You can let this dry, then you can work on top of it in pen or in paint or in more ink. You can add stickers to it. You can use it for collage. You can use it as a greetings card. There are so many things you can play with. It's just actually just quite a fun thing to do. I'm going to put this one to the side. I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but with the diluted paint. So now I'm going to demonstrate the second method the, of our workshop today. I'm going to be using the watered down poster paint. So you need a clean piece of paper. Put it down on your worktop, nice covered worktop. Mine's getting a little bit messy now. And you're going to apply some very diluted poster paint. So I've got some blue. I'm going to dab it on with a, with a paintbrush. 
nice big splodge there. You don't want to be stingy with it, you want to give it lots. And use some yellow. I'm going to give this red a little stir because the paint has settled to the bottom. I'm going to use some red. I'm going to pop some in the corner of the sheet and in the middle. You can place the, the colours wherever you like. And now I'm finally going to add some green. It can be quite generous. Okay, so now we're going to use our straw again, trusty straw. And it's not as, it's diluted, but it's not quite as runny as the ink. So you might need a little bit more puff here. We're going to get right down low, as low as I can get whilst it's sitting, and give the paint a blue and see what happens. Who knows what's going to happen? It's exciting. I'm going to turn the paper around again. 180 because all my paint shot to one end of the page. And one, two, three, blue. And the air is pushing the paint around the page. I'm going to turn it again, 180, and find a puddle where some paint has settled and blow again. And again. Oh, I'm getting some nice spidery, spidery, uh, shapes of forming on the paper. I've turned the paper around again and I'm just going to attack this small bundle of paint in the corner with a one, two, three blue. So I've finished my design now. It's pretty wet so I'm going to pop it to the side to to dry out. Um, as it stands, it's, it, it's quite fragile, so you just want to move it over, put it on some newspaper or some um, or a cloth and just leave it to, to dry. When it's dry, you can, again, you can cut it up, use it as collage, make a greetings card out of it. There are so many different things you can use it for. It's great fun. So that's, that's the second method finished now. Okay, so we've tried ink, we've tried diluted poster paint, and now we're gonna try some things from the kitchen cupboard. So as we discussed earlier, we've, uh, we've diluted some coffee here in a small amount of water, so it's super strong. That's a nice dark brown color. And I've got some orange food dye, and I've got some pink food dye. And you know what, these smell fantastic. So first of all, we're gonna start with another crisp white piece of paper, or a, a pale color. And I'm going to use a teaspoon to just dribble this diluted coffee around, around the page. It really smells quite strongly. Then I'm going to dot some food colouring, which is the orange. And it, because it's got made of orange extract, it actually smells a little bit orangey, so that's quite fun. I'm going to dribble some of that around. Food extract quite oily, so it'll be interesting to see how the two merge together and maybe a little bit of this natural pink that's a little bit of a fruity smell to it as well like aromatherapy so on my page i've got nice splodges of uh, very random splodges again remember there's no right or wrong to this and i'm going to give it a blow and see what happens and um, this one will be quite earthy i think just because of the color palette let's give it a try one, two, three. Oh, it's flowing quite quickly. I think that's the coffee. I'm going to turn it around 180 and give it the blow from a different direction. And Turn it around again. Yeah, so all my all my liquids come to this end. I'm gonna blow it back that way. One, two, three. And 
tarnish again and give it another blow. And this one, <laughs> ooh, it's a dribbly one. I'm going to shape the dribbles onto the next bit of paper. And then put it to the side to dry. And as I said, this one's a little bit oily. It might take a little bit longer to dry. And just because I've got one little bit of paper left over now, which I've dribbled onto, I think I might try and mix up all three techniques on the same sheet. So I'm going to put some blue ink on, add it to the dribbles from the coffee and the food colouring. And take a splodge of the yellow paint and add that onto the paper in a nice random fashion and see what happens when I mix all three techniques together. So let's give it a blow. turned out pretty cool the mixture of all three techniques so that's us tried all these different ways I hope you have enjoyed um, this introduction to ink blowing as much as I've enjoyed filming it for you and I really hope that you have a great time playing with your new design method thanks for watching sense connecting sight sound and life. No one left out of life, no matter what.